This is Ken Pyle with VOD TV. We're with uh, old time friend, long time friend, John Lundgren of Volcano Telephone. And John, nice seeing you. Nice seeing you. And I've uh, got to start this with a little story. My parents, uh, long time customers of Volcano Telephone, but when they were in their 70s and 80s, uh, they had an epiphany that they were living a little too far away from civilization. <laughs> on, a, on a dirt road, a really nice place. They had built their dream house, retirement dream house. But when, they had a really bad winter here, and it was so bad that they went for uh, seven days stuck in their house. No electricity, no heat. And if it hadn't been for Volcano Telephone's telephone service working, who knows what would have happened. John, I have to ask, power. It's always been a big concern of your company, and you've uh, made sure that it works. How do you do that? Uh, all of our sites are equipped with uh, propane and generators of variations. Uh, some of them are direct 48 volt fed. Some of them are uh, just AC powered. And between the batteries that we have in the remote sites and uh, these generators, we, after a predetermined time with the batteries, we'll go out and start all the generators and then continue to service them, make sure they're running. Uh, actually, at some point, if the power outages, the seven-day outages are a good example of that, we actually have to start shuttling in new propane tanks to uh, take the place of the 50-gallon tanks we have on these sites. Well, and really what you've created is a, is a distributed power system that is more reliable than the utility. Yes, yeah, we we like it when the power, the, the utility power works, but uh, we've had to do this because, and and not, they have a lot of uh, issues to keep their power running because this is pretty uh, remote territory with a lot of things that can go wrong. Yeah, you're saying 60 feet of snow um, up at Kirkwood last year. So one of the things, though, that is interesting is that it really has been um, a uh, an evolution in your architecture that has allowed this and it really started in the mid 1990s maybe you could talk about that and how that's really facilitated broadband it, yeah in the in the in the mid 90s we began planning for like most companies for 12,000 foot loops and began to place uh, remotes throughout strategic points along our routes and <clears throat> placing fiber of course to feed many of them um, and that is what the uh, the beginning of broadband allowed us to to get DSL out to most places with with those loop distances. Um, have continued to do so, pushing that pi fiber out, pushing that fiber forward, uh, and leveraging off the uh, copper plant to power the equipment uh, off of these original 12,000 foot loop sites out to uh, remote sites. Well, and you know, I was talking to a friend who has a place up in Kirkwood, a condo up in Kirkwood, and he, uh, he was commenting, and he's Silicon Valley kind of guy, and he, he was commenting that that was one of the first places he could get DSL. Yeah, yeah, we, we probably, it was very early 2000 when DSL first came available. Uh, not that it didn't have its uh, hiccups in the early days, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's one of the areas that we, we got, got to early on. And so, uh, you know, you've kept up with the industry as far as, you know, now you're offering, I guess, 20 megabits per second downstream. Where do you see this going? Is there an end? I, I don't see an end. If you, you look at computers and processing power over the years, uh, I believe somebody said 640K uh, was enough memory <laughs> some time back. Um, obviously, that's proven to be incorrect. I don't, I don't see an end to uh, the broadband speeds th that we're going to need. I mean... Yeah, there's technological and theoretical limits, but um, I still see those being broken in time as well. Well, and I, I think, uh, you know, we'll, like you say, we'll see that, and uh, we'll also continue to see your network evolve. So, John, I appreciate your time, and let's get inside where it's yeah. a little warmer. Yeah, so thanks. <laughs> yeah, this unexpected rainstorm. Thanks a lot.